coastline is not natural anymore. It's a mix of artificial and natural. They need management, they need uh, enhancement, they need work to remain at the peak of their productivity for seabirds, for shorebirds, for wetland bird species. And that's what we've done with Life on the Edge. The focus of Life on the Edge is about restoring the habitat we've got, creating new habitat and developing recommendations, create and restore habitat on a much wider scale. Life on the Edge is a project that's being led by the RSPB and our key partner is the National Trust. We're also working very closely with Natural England and the Environment Agency to deliver at a scale and an ambition that we couldn't do unless we were all working together. Life on the Edge is a big project. It's spread out on an England scale. There are an array of different habitats that the project's working on. And our SPA network, this network of special protected areas, this is the real core of those uh, feeding areas, those breeding areas, those really important sites. We can dream dreams, we can put things together on a scale for the future that wouldn't be possible working alone. The England coastline is globally important. In the summer months, birds will travel here to breed. So you've got a whole array of seabird species that come here from uh, their wintering grounds in Africa. All the tern species, you've got multiple gold species that travel around Europe and you know, down to Africa, all come here to breed on the salt marsh, on the shingle, and the habitat we've got. And in the winter, you've got a whole new set of birds that come in from northern climates to spend their, their winter months feeding up um, before going back to their breeding grounds. And in between those seasons, you've got the migrating species that are just popping through our coasts, dropping in, feeding and moving on again. The main focus of the project is to restore the sites we've got, creating new islands, regaining water control, creating salt marsh, using the beaches we've got so that birds can be successfully nesting on those. This is the meat and bones of the project on the ground. Coastal sites are dynamic by their very nature. They change on a daily basis through wind and tide and weather, and that puts them under pressure. So through the Life on the Edge project, we've also been making changes, and we're changing how we manage these sites, and we're changing the habitats and allowing space for nature to move into. So this is our new realignment, completed in April, May 2023. So before that, this field was a hay field. We've removed 200 metres of seawall and created a whole new ditch system and creek system. We've done no other works. So everything behind me is just from the natural action of the sea coming in and out. We haven't seeded it, we haven't dug it up. It's just normal tidal action. And already we're starting to see the mud come in and settle down on the ground. All the green behind me are these halophytes, these salt loving plants, particularly marsh samphire, that are now establishing in this field. There are several reasons why we do this realignment. One is about protecting the land that we have and actually allowing that coastal squeeze, anticipating a rise in sea levels and mitigating some of those effects. But also it's about habitat protection and habitat creation. So all around this estuary, as through most of the UK, a lot of the sea walls and the sea defences are hard defences. So they are brickwork, they are concrete, they are those sorts of things. Those sea walls don't give the natural habitats, things like salt marsh, anywhere to go and move naturally inland. So by creating more habitat, and more space for that to move into, and changing how we manage our river walls, we're allowing the longevity of that salt marsh, that longer life, and space for it to move as well. A really good example of an impact of climate change on this site here would be a lack of rainfall. So it's theoretically possible that we will not receive any significant rain until well into October or November, which leaves us in a position where we're unable to get the site wet. So the solar pumps allow us to tap into existing water resources on the site and bring that to where we need, allowing us to flood these areas up. This is one of the four solar pumps that we put in on the Life Under the Edge project. The power comes direct from the solar pump, so we don't need to use any fossil fuels to move the water around. The solar pump is just down here, drawing the water out of this water body here. It flows through this bund and into that ditch. It's picked up by another solar pump, pumps the water, so we can create ideal conditions in those really dry years. I'll get some early flooding in the autumn, creating lots of lovely muddy edge, and it's those muddy edge features that the lapwing and the red shank find, little inverts, little microbes in the soil on the surface that they can feed on and helps them grow, and as they grow quicker, that means they're able to fledge quicker. 
The results we've seen so far, an increase in the number of breeding lapwing and redshank, which is really pleasing, uh, and they're benefiting from our increased ability to retain water longer into the season. But there's also lots of benefits to be had for things like black-headed gulls, common terns, which have also enjoyed breeding on the new and enhanced features across the reserve. So over time, beaches, they flatten and lower. They're much more vulnerable to tidal inundation, which would mean an increased number of nest failures. And then over time, that would mean a lack of returning birds and you'd get a small decline in the population. Effectively, at Halsey Island, what we did was we created a brand new beach. So working with our partners, Harwich Haven Authority and the Environment Agency, we used sand and shingle material that Harwich Haven were dredging from their major channel deepening operation. This material was then then transported by a dredger to Horsey Island where it was deposited adjacent to the existing beach. As that material moves and is sculpted by the wind and the wave action, it rolls backwards over the existing beach, raising the height of that existing beach. And what we hope that will mean is that we have secured the future of the Little Tain colony at Horsey from the impacts of climate change for around 50 to 60 years. Now the project's coming to its end, it's great to look back and see just how much we've achieved. In year one, out of the initial habitat work in Hobbarrow, uh, 600 sandwich terns made their home there, coupled with uh, another 50 little terns to boot. On Horsey Island, on the first year after that habitat was, was created, a little tern colony expanded there and located on the new section as well and had great success. In year two, sandwich terns were prospecting and other terns were looking to, um, to use that. We have grown an England-wide beach nesting bird programme. You've got volunteers who've never really paid any interest to birds that are on their beach before. And now they will know all about them and they will have names and they will pop out every day to see these ring plovers snuggling down on their eggs. So we know that these areas, once put in place, have got a lot of potential to deliver. Those projects which have reached out beyond the, the nature reserve borders have been embraced by the local community. There is a great desire to connect with wildlife in our world now. You know, if you take a look around the country, you've got new projects flourishing into life that hadn't existed before, and new partnerships, new volunteer networks, and we can have so much more. We just need to plan, we need to act, we need to work together to make it happen. Our coasts are rich with wildlife and they could be richer still. You can support our coastal wildlife by helping to keep the focus on it. We have an amazing coastline, but it needs us to help guarding it and it needs us to help plan for its future in a very changing world. To make some of these changes really happen and see the benefits happen, it's a privilege, it's a responsibility, but it's really important and it's good fun. When a flame is lit in the community, everyone gathers around to support it and help it grow. It is great to see the legacy that's been created.